Ireland, a small island off the west coast of Europe, home to tales and legends of gods and goddesses, heroes and monsters, as well as otherworldly tales of mythological creatures such as leprechauns, banshees and fairies. The island is also home to some famous megalithic structures such as Newgrange, which was constructed by Stone Age populations and aligned to the Winter Solstice, making it the oldest astronomically aligned structure in the world at around 5,200 years old, which is older than Stonehenge and even the Great Pyramids of Giza. The Sacred Hill of Tara is another mystical place and is where the Lea Fall lies, the so-called Stone of Destiny. These famous grounds are where the mythological Tuha Danan gods reigned, a mysterious group who arrived on strange ships in black clouds and are said to have had magical powers. There are many connections in the stories to Egyptian royalty. Firstly, we have the legend of Queen Scotia, an Egyptian princess that is said to have escaped Egypt and sailed to Ireland with her husband, a Greek king. Such was her status that the country Scotland was named after her, and in the mountains of County Kerry, Ireland, her grave is marked by a giant stone in an area where she is said to have died in battle after falling off her horse. We then have the puzzling skeleton of an ape that was found buried the legend goes that one of the most important Egyptian gods, Toth, who is said to have brought wisdom and writing to the world, sailed from Egypt to Ireland, accompanied by the ape. He was often represented and symbolised by a baboon. Apes are not indigenous to Ireland, so how and why would the skeleton of an ape that was dated at two and a half thousand years old have gotten all the way to Ireland from its indigenous home in North Africa? And lastly, when the infamous King Tutankhamun's mummy was analysed, the results were extremely surprising as they showed that the young king belonged to a genetic profile group known as Haplogroup or 1B, to which more than 50% of all men in Western Europe belong, and up to 70-80% to in Spain, Britain, France and Ireland, indicating that those carrying this blood type share a common ancestor with King Tut. Among modern day Egyptians, this haplogroup is actually below 1%. The pre-Christian people of Ireland did not keep written records. Instead, there is a long history of storytelling where the tales and legends of the people were passed down through generations by word of mouth. This helped to preserve and evolve the country's mythology over time until written accounts were recorded by the Christian monks around 1000 years ago. Northern Europe was the last area of Europe to be populated at the end of the last ice age. When the ice sheets began retreating, ancient European hunter-gatherers moved into Britain from the surrounding land in what is now known as Doggerland, which connected Britain to mainland Europe. Rising sea levels from the melting glaciers and a tsunami caused by a landslide off the coast of Norway sank that land around 8,000 years ago. Ireland at that time was connected to Britain by a temporary land bridge, so it's then we see evidence for the first wave of migration. Many different migrations and invasions took place by sea over the thousands of years that followed, and we now have a clearer picture of the genetic makeup that the Irish people possess. In 2015, researchers sequenced ancient Irish human genomes for the first time with four different remains analysed. One was a woman who lived around 5,200 years ago. The female farmer had ancestry that originated in Mesopotamia in the Middle East, a region famous for giving rise to the first civilizations that we know of, and for the rise and spread of agriculture. This farmer would have resembled modern people from the area of the Fertile Crescent, which would have stretched through Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan and Israel. Her ancestors most likely reached Ireland around 4000 BC from a route that would have taken them through the Mediterranean Sea and up the Iberian coast. These agricultural people brought a new way of life that encouraged permanent settlement by way of domesticated plants and crops, 
pottery and new farm animals such as cattle and sheep. So even though Ireland is quite synonymous with sheep, they were actually domesticated around 10,000 years ago in the Middle East and taken here by boat by these ancient farmers and would revolutionise the way of living on the island. Could these Egyptian connections be true? Why did these people from the Levant come so far? And how did it take so many crops, plants and animals? Three men were also analysed and they were found on the Rathlin Islands dated at 4000 to 3500 BC. The remains of these Bronze Age men show a different group of migrants entered Ireland 1 to 2000 years after the female farmer believed to be the Celtic people, originating from ancient sources located in what would be now modern-day Ukraine and the Pontic Steppe in southern Russia. Ireland still has a strong connection to its Celtic heritage and culture, and these pagan tribes brought the Bronze Age to the island, as well as music, dancing, and the Indo-European ancestral language, which then developed into Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and what are now known as the Celtic languages. Interestingly, the Celts brought with them the blood type Or1b, the same blood type as King Tutankhamun and which is believed to have originated in the Caucasus region. This haplogroup is the same gene responsible for lactose persistence and blue eyes, which was brought across Central and Western Europe over thousands of years as these people dominated what is now mainland Europe in the ancient past and explains why many modern day Europeans and Americans carry this blood type. Now, with the help of this analysis, we know that the agricultural revolution and the Bronze Age metallurgy practices were brought to the country in the ancient past by seafaring tribes. So perhaps these legends and tales of royal Egyptians and mystical arrivals on the Irish shores are not so far-fetched after all. And maybe new discoveries in the future can explain some of the other mysteries of the Emerald Isle. Until then, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned.